All right, we are all set. Thanks, Erin. Hi, everybody. Um, I am here today to chat with you. I'm looking at who's uh, who's with us. I I see uh, Shirley, and I see um, several people here with us. Um, so I'm here today to talk with you about the Open SUNY YouTube channel and the videos that we have been developing and the playlists that we have been um, um, curating and developing and to make sure that everyone in the community is aware that these um, video assets are um, available at, to you um, and to sort of give you an overview of what they are. Um, I'm hoping that some of you uh, may have actually been interviewed for uh, some of these um, um, uh, themes that we've been collecting uh, over the past couple of years and and I just want you to be able to know that they're there and um, and to kind of give you an overview of where they are and how we have um, sort of made collections of videos uh, to help you use them. Um, so first of all, the YouTube channel, the Open SUNY YouTube channel is what I have up on the screen that I wanted uh, to make sure that you were aware of. And if by chance you were at the summit this past a couple of weeks ago or participated virtually, all of the videos from the summit are available here in the YouTube channel and we're in the process of getting them closed captioned. So if you're interested in checking any of these topics out, um, this is where they are. Uh, we also post our fellow chats, the recordings of our fellow chats and of these webinars, these informational webinars that we're doing. Um, we also post those um, on our YouTube channel. And if you've been to the summit um, over the past few years, you will know that I've had a videographer there with us for the three days and we have had specific themes that we have been collecting, um, you know, the um, thoughts and, and and um, tips and explanations from the participants at the summit on these specific themes. And, um, and so hopefully you've had the chance, if you were there, you've had the chance to be video. We're um, likely to continue to use um, that opportunity of the summit to collect, um, you know, the, uh, the stuff in the brain trust, right, um, for, to share with the rest of the community. Um, I, I, it's been very specific. The themes have been very specific. And so this last um, uh, time, a couple of weeks ago at the summit, we were looking specifically for uh, use cases of the Oscar rubric. We want to see how in institutions have um, adopted Oscar and how they've implemented it and what customizations and modifications they've made, like how they have adapted it for their own use. We were looking for specific use cases. And then previously we looked for examples, um, for example, of, of each of the standards in Oscar. And then previously to that, we were looking for um, faculty um, who were really enthusiastic about online teaching or anyone who was really enthusiastic about it, online teaching to share what specifically they were enthusiastic about. And so we've had very specific goals um, and themes for each of those um, video collection aspects. And, and of course, we also have collected sort of miscellaneous stuff as well, but, but um, I like to have a specific um, goal in mind which ultimately will be used in, in some other thing that we're doing or that we think would be broadly um, um, applicable or, or um, usable by the community. So I want to mention that um, the resources here, the video resources are free, openly licensed and closed captioned, and they're intended to um, support our own um, online teaching um, work, the, the initiatives and projects that we're working on, but they're also intended for use in campus-based online faculty and course development activities. And um, so I just keep that in mind as, as I'm um, going through these. I mentioned the videographer that we use. Um, his name is Jeremy Case. I want to give some acknowledgments here. Um, Jeremy is a videographer and 
really an instructional designer in his heart. He's an amazing um, person and human being and videographer. And it's a wonderful pleasure to work with him on these projects. Um, he comes from Mohawk Valley community. Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. He comes from Monroe, <laughs> Monroe Community College. And, um, and so I just want to uh, send a shout out to him and, and thanks for all of his uh, brilliant work and efforts. And then I also want to thank all of the participants who um, allow themselves to be videotaped and, to, and their willingness to share their expertise and their experiences with the community. Um, so, uh, so again, this is the front page, the, the video, uh, sorry, the um, YouTube channel for, um, uh, for uh, Open SUNY. And then I want to show you the playlist page, uh, which is here. And Erin, I'm sure will pop uh, the link, uh, the direct link. I have a bit.ly for that, um, uh, which I think is bit.ly slash Open SUNY YouTube, but there's some caps mm -hmm. there that are, um, uh, you know, yeah. that will matter. Um, so these playlists, as I said, have been created w intentionally with intention um, for specific audiences and for specific uses, our own specific uses, but also with an eye towards what campuses might be interested in sharing with their new or experienced um, online faculty or really with any online practitioners um, that they may have uh, on their campus. And we've tried to label them so it's, you know, self-explanatory um, what they what they are. Um, you know, we envision that the videos can be used um, by a, a campus in, um, in a variety Variety of ways you could obviously you know browse the videos individually um, and you can browse the the playlists as um, informational and topical videos these can be used as I said by IDs um, and by online faculty and and then by anyone other and uh, any others interested in uh, any of the general or the specific topics um, one of you know we try to capture, you know, a variety of online practitioners' uh, perspectives um, and student perspectives, actually. Also, there's some student um, um, thoughts in here as well. But the one I wanted to call out was this one, Topics for Online uh, Learning Administrators. So I just wanted to make sure that you saw the breadth and scope of the types of, of um, sort of focuses of, of these playlists um, and that you could take a look at them and see if there's a place uh, somewhere in your um, in, in your processes that where they might fit and augment or supplement what you're already providing um, you know obviously you can integrate um, links to direct directly to videos or to playlists from any website um, or faculty development materials that you may have um, the playlists and the individual videos all also can be directly embedded with through the embed code provided by YouTube and they can go directly into any websites that you have or into your LMS if you have um, LMS resources uh, set up for your for your faculty. Um, the way that they're organized, I want to just go over a little bit, uh, you know, of, of what is in here. Um, we have a couple of series. Um, we have an effective practices series, um, which um, really includes a lot of um, uh, course design ideas and you can see how many videos are in each playlist um, right here from the playlist list. So there's tips for designing an online course, there's the pitfalls of online student faculty interaction, there's creating and running discussion forums, discussions in online courses, academic integrity, developing community in an online course, revising your online course, supporting online faculty and communities of practice. Those are all of the, the topics in the Effective Practices series. We also have an Ideas for Engagement <clears throat> Uh, series, which is a list of 13 videos. That's down here, this one. Um, and in that one, that's really like course elements and examples. Um, so we have ideas for ice breaking activities. We have teaching the scientific method, using wikis, having students hunt for apps, 
um, tasks in discussion forums, online tests, making team projects work, serve, incorporating service learning, um, teaching leadership through self-reflection. Um, there's a, a, a case study that um, um, an individual reports on. There's assignments with real world application, critical thinking, and um, discussion forum based simulation. These are all sort of like, you know, um, specific things that people are doing that we think, you know, could be shared for others to adopt and, and adapt for their own purposes. Um, then we have, uh, you know, some, I already mentioned the summit videos and the fellow chat videos. We have a number of videos for, uh, that are associated with the interested in online teaching resource and um, the um, 10 myths about online teaching is, is featured in that um, playlist, uh, which is a really nice, quick, short, um, video that one can share with those who have not yet taught online and, and might be interested in, um, you know, thinking through some of their misperceptions or, or, um, or addressing some of the assumptions that they have about online teaching. We have a whole bunch of videos on Oscar <coughs> <clears throat> and the the big one is um, is the one that's associated with Oscar.org, and that um, is a, one video for each of the standards um, that are in Oscar. And these videos are incorporated into Oscar.org, embedded into Oscar.org for each standard. So when you look at each st standard, you can see there's a little. Um, you know, micro learning video that's associated with each standard and here they are collected all in one playlist. Um, <clears throat> we also have online teaching ambassadors talking about um, their, um, why they're enthusiastic. That's also in here in this interested in online learning um, uh, video playlist, I think. Um, and we, we have a number of, of um, really good videos in, uh, listed in here. Um, we also have um, advanced topics um, for online faculty, teaching online, um, topics for new online faculty. You can see the, the, um, the labels here. Um, topics rec and recommendations for experienced online faculty. Um, that's this one over here. I can click on that just to show you. Oh, stop. See if that will come up. Um, we have topics specifically for IDs, and here's here's the topics in this playlist. You know, accessibility, authentic assessments, constant revision, support services, um, and so forth. Um, we have academic integrity, um, creating a, sorry, 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 uh, topics for administrators. Oh, things about relationships, logistics, assessment of learning, um, and so forth. So um, I am um, going to open it up for any questions. If anyone has any questions, um, I'm not going to go in and, and show you videos. I think it would be better and easier for you to kind of browse those on your own and take a look at them yourself. What I will say about the videos is that they're really, really well produced. They, and and th there's multiple people that are interviewed and then it's all, you know, cut together to, to make sense. Um, and the every individual who's videotaped their name and their institution um, is uh, highlighted. And, um, uh, you know, I can I, I just say that you know, there's some depth to, to some of these videos. Some of them are short, some of them are longer, um, but the production quality is, is uh, very, it's very well done. So do we have, um, do we have some questions? And I don't have any that have come up in the chat yet, but feel free, anyone can type in the chat or you can unmute yourself and use the microphone. I mean, does anyone um, 
have any ideas uh, off the bat of how how you might leverage these in in some way or were you aware of them beforehand trying to get a sense and then i also want to make sure um to ask anyone who's tuning in right now if you could put your name and where you're tuning in from in the chat just so that we know um you know where you are from what institution and so forth i mean some of you we probably already know but just in case there's people who are here from or not from SUNY. There's a, a great question in the chat. Is there a way for uh, uh, for folks to suggest topics to us for future videos? Yeah, I think that would be a fabulous idea. And um, you know, you could use the um, the comment area in YouTube, or if you have the idea right now, you could give it to us in the chat, or you could send it to us. Um, you know online via email or via the um, any place that you you have a way to send us a communication through co hub or through workplace or or um, you know wherever um, so I, I'd love to have um, you know to collect any ideas for future collections yeah. to learning management systems oh that's a really great question Julie um, you know we kind of focus more on pedagogy than on the learning management system because blackboard which is you know the primary you know there's other learning management systems in suny but blackboard is sort of like our preferred primary learning management system they do a really good job of documenting we can never keep up with them um and so we do have you know some um um things that we talk about in trainings and so forth that regarding the learning management system, but really we, we rely more on, on Blackboard for keeping us up to date on that. Hi, uh, uh, Alex, Art Regal here. I was going to ask a question on these uh, videos, if they were really uh, geared towards Blackboard use, if there was anything that um, was technical in terms of Blackboard use, because we use Brightspace, which was was D2L now, um, our campus yeah. has converted, and and I was wondering if uh, if they were general videos yeah. on just pedagogy versus yeah. some technical. They are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Art. I mean, you know, learning management systems change. There's different sure. versions of them, and even within Blackboard, um, uh, you know, and and different institutions have different implementations of the learning management system. And so it's really hard for us to get specific when it comes to the LMS. Um, so, and, and our focus and our expertise really is in online teaching pedagogy. So we are really focused on being as broadly applicable as possible. Um, and, um, and so, yeah. I also wanted to mention, I, I just was, was viewing, uh, I think it was a 2016 summit and it was the uh, non-trad student, the adult student who came back and she had taken 28 online courses. She was my student. <laughs> right, right, I can't remember her name, but uh, she listed what she liked and what she didn't like about professors who were teaching online in terms of their teaching methods or lack thereof. And uh, I did, uh, I, I have to admit that when she's talked about discussions, um, I thought, ooh, am I being too, too onerous in terms of my discussion requirement because I like the, a discussion to be stretched out. And uh, I think I'm going to re-gear, re my discussion requirements because of that video uh, yeah. because of that student. Her um, name was Alicia Fernandez. Okay. And, and if anyone has not seen Ready, it, Jeff. Oops, just I, what if anyone hasn't seen this, Alicia is a force of nature, an amazing human being. And um, I, she, she was my student uh, in, um, uh, in the master's program at UAlbany in the curriculum design and instructional technology program. She got her BA, um, her master's and the certificate in online teaching all online all after having started college when she was college age and then left college for um, you know competing life priorities and then came back to college after she had had her family and her career and everything and then got all of her degrees all online and she is an incredible resource number one from the student perspective she's first generation her parents were for, from were from argentina uh, she lives in new york city she's just a 
an amazing human and when she and she's able to speak really well about her experience and um so i would i would recommend um um uh, you know, that you take a look at that because she, or an, any faculty, just to calibrate against, you know, what the student experience is like. She's, she's a, really a, a cool person and has a lot of cool suggestions and advice. It was, it, was a, it was a good video. Sometimes we think we're doing a good job. Uh, you know, I use this, the uh, summation of posts way of, of grading a discussion. You know, you grade each and every post according to a rubric. Because uh, way back when I started teaching, when it was SUNY Learning Network and we had Lotus Notes, I remember, remember that. Yeah. Uh, and I used to grade holistically. I used to grade the discussion holistically according to a rubric after the discussion was over. And I received some student complaints about that because they felt that well, they didn't get a chance to to wow. increase their discussion points because now it's over and now you give me a grade. So I went to this. Uh, grading each post, but um, I'm starting to think maybe I should go back to just grading it all with with a, a rubric holistically and just you know post one one original post, post two or three to to uh, the other folks and uh, be done with it, and maybe that will accommodate some of our working people and our yeah. family family yeah, folks. It's, you always have to sort of try and figure a good balance and a really good rubric can help you with that. I mean, clearly students need to have, if they're not used to dis online discussion, that's not just fluffy, right? That's really, right. Then they do need some, some guidance in it so that they can improve their discussion score. And if you wait till the end, you know, that can piss people off because they feel like, well, if I had known, I would have, you know, tried to. Exactly differently so you kind of want to figure out a good happy medium and a good rubric will help right and and modeling that too, like giving a student the students an example of what a good post looks like because they'll try and copy it you know what I mean so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I like okay. it when you say this and then they cut and paste the yeah, other students yeah, work yeah. But yeah yeah <laughs> but it was a good video yeah, good. I'm glad um, we have, um, like I said, collected the videos and posted them from all of the summits. And if you're not able to come in person uh, and, and you're interested in a particular speaker or a particular topic, these speakers are, you know, rock stars. Um, this year we had um, Tanya Justin and um, Peter Shea and uh, Jesse Stommel and Amy Collier and Rob Steiner from the American um, Museum of Natural History. I, I mean, really amazing people talking about issues like open pedagogy and online science um, uh, courses and um, how to turn theory into practice and sharing information um, and resources that I think the community community um, in general would be interested in. These are not specific to the LMS. This is really about online teaching and learning and thinking about some of the issues, um, you know, inside our boxes and, and a little outside our boxes too. And, and so I would really recommend that you check those out. Our fellow chats are also super interesting. We just had one of our community members from Oswego, Teresa. Um, she has a hyphenated last name, Tillard Cook, something like that. She, she just was talking about, um, how, you know, people hating group work and, and how to address that. And so that's one of the po one of them posted here. I'll see if I can find it. Um, and uh, and so yeah, I mean we have a number of really um, awesome videos that um, and and collections of videos that you know it takes a little digging in. That's why I'm doing this webinar is to make sure that here it is, Gillard Cook on group work. Um, to make sure that people are aware that these are there and that you can um, right. take, uh, you know, uh, some time if you're looking for something, see if there's something that addresses it among the, the videos here. Although Chancellor came to the summit this year and gave some remarks. It's a very short 10 minute video, uh, but she spoke very well about how she sees online learning dovetailing with her four top initiatives for the system. Um, so that's a really uh, nice one to see. It was very, you know, I was so thrilled that she came. Um, so, um, yeah, any other questions, Erin, that have come in? 
I'm not seeing any. Um, I did note in the chat, though, if anybody does have something that they would love to showcase on a fellow chat, I put in the links to make that available and they can be recorded and added to our playlist. Yeah, so anybody here on the call, I know, Art, that you have, you know, best practices and, and Julie and everybody else, I can't see the rest of the list here. Oh, here. Um, 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 Andrea and Nancy and Sheree, I'm not sure who everybody is, but I, you know, I'm sure that you have things that either you're aware of from your faculty, if you're an ID or that you do yourself, um, or um, if you are faculty, you know, best practices that you have, uh, you know, are tried and true for you that we would love to showcase with the community and invite you to come and do a fellow chat and or um, a blog post for us in some way engage um, to share what you know with the rest of the community. We have lots of mechanisms mechanisms um, for that. In fact, let me just bring up Co-Hub um, to show you all of the ways that you can engage. Um, if you look on the Co-Hub website and look under the Engage tab, all of these are ways that you can engage in the community and that we're always looking for people, um, you know, to um, nominate, um, an, to share an effective practice, to um, become a, um, a mentor, to offer to review online courses, to nominate a course for observation. Um, you can volunteer for different things. So I, I encourage you um, to, to check out the different ways to engage in the community. So, um, Alex, there's a, a quick question from Julie. I don't want it to slip away. Um, I don't know if you can see the chat. She said she met you in Toronto. Do we have videos discussing how faculty have incorporated badging? And you can actually search on the YouTube um, for the word badges and it will pull up some videos for you. So I don't think we have anything. Do we, do we, Erin, have anything specific to badging yet? Um, we do have a couple. We have um, a video on digital badges. Um, we have um, Carla Casilli's um, presentation oh, from yeah. one of the summits on badges. Yep, yep, yep. And a couple and advanced topics, yeah. And if you did a search, like if I do this right here, it, will it bring it up in, uh, from ours? No, not up there. Okay, where do I go? Um, so if you move that, there's a, the, um, here, the little here. magnifying glass, yes, right there. Oh, let me just see what we've got. I do remember Carla Casilli. Oh, cool. Okay, so this guy is from Credly. He's like the second in command there at Credly, um, which is the platform that we use. And this is Carla Casilli, um, who came a couple of years ago to the summit to talk about um, digital credentialing. And then apparently there's a couple of others who have talked. Oh, Kyle Peck, I remember him too. Um, oh, and this guy from Pepperdine. Yeah, so there, it looks like there are a couple. Stephen Downs, I don't think he's really down with badges, so I'm not sure what he said about it, but... <laughs> Um, so, but this is, Julie, this is a great um, topic that I think, um, you know, we're just getting started. We have a task force on badges and micro-credentialing at the system level right now that's doing some work. And um, I mean, I, here in Open SUNY, we've been working on badging for quite, for a while, for, for a few years, and have created a really cool ecosystem of badges. Um, but it's, it, we're still kind of in the building and information sharing stage, but the topic is a really cool topic as this matures. Um, I, th I can see us, um, you know, do doing a, um, a theme of collecting information from people on how they're using badges. We just had someone at one of our research universities, they identified the role, I can't remember Anne's title, but she is in charge of badging and micro-credentialing at UB, which is one of our big R1 universities. So I think, you know, it's coming in more and more into the mainstream and getting, um, you know, more, um, you know, sort of highlighted and, and, and more play, at, and especially as roles get identified in the micro-credentialing academic side of the area, I mean, the sort of professional non-credit side of the area, um, of the topic, um, but I, I think it's a really great idea, um, and in a, I think in a couple of years that we should really focus on getting some stories of how people are, are using badges. Great. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to 
tell you was, you know, to thank you for coming to the um, to this event, and that um, you, because you are participating in this activity, you are eligible to claim your community participant badge. And uh, and so this is what it is. This this is the the page that describes the badge. But in order to claim your badge, um, you would need to go to Credly and then uh, pop in the claim code. Um, Aaron, can you pop that claim code into the chat? Or I guess I could too, if I can find it. I did. I guess I did it twice, but it's, okay. it's in there. So all you have to do is go to Credly, credly.com. And you'll need an account, so it's easy as giving your name and your email address, and then I think you have to verify it. But then once you once you have claim once you have set the account up, you go into Credly and click on claim credit, and then just right here you enter that claim code that Aaron has um, uh, popped into the into the chat, and then claim the credit, and then you'll get a little badge, not a little badge, but a badge um, uh, that represents your um, uh, effort as a community participant in one of the activities that we sponsor. We want to recognize that you took time out of your day and that you devoted it to professional development to learn more about the video assets in Open SUNY. And I, that's a way of thanking you and recognizing that effort. So. Um, so yeah, thank you very much everyone for, for coming. If you have any questions, um, I think Aaron posted ways to contact us in the chat um, and, um, and certainly in the comments of the YouTube channel um, and anywhere on our um, you know, um, web presences. There are lots of ways to, to get in touch with us. So I appreciate everybody's time and um, thanks for coming and we'll see you next time. The next one we're doing is on, Erin, do you remember which the next one is? It is, is it the interested course? It is on Oscar, okay. oscar.org and um, it is scheduled for April 24th. April 24th, okay. And we'll be sending out um, communications um, so that people know that this is, you know, going to happen. And and um, oh, I spelled it wrong. Sorry, that's me trying to talk and type at the same time. Sorry, it's oh, I see. You already did it. Oh, you're you're faster than me. Awesome. <laughs> okay, talk. I typed credly wrong, so oh it's, it was God. crudely. So we're um, we're all doing well. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and the weekend, and I hope to see you somewhere at some point online soon. <laughs> Thank you both.